What's going on guys? Victor here from Depot Bay, Oregon. I got little Brookster with me. Good morning. And we got Jordan from Stay Fishy Adventures. Hey everybody, thanks for being here. This is gonna be a really cool adventure. To the ocean we go. And a uh, big thank you to this guy right here, Jacob, for inviting us out. Um, Jacob Micklight with Micklight's Guide Service. <laughs> Been working out of Depot Bay on the charter boats my entire life. I kind of grew up on them and so the ocean's kind of my home. I was born and raised here. And Go out and catch some rockfish and lingcod today. It'll be a good day out there. And I'm really excited because we're after a fish today known as a lingcod, which you guys saw that we caught lingcod in Alaska, but down here they get a really cool genetic variation where the meat of the fish is actually a blue-green tint. So we'll see you guys out there. Jordan was actually in Florida, what, like two weeks ago and you guys were freaking out about the gators? Yeah, everything. Were... I was chasing iguanas barefoot. I was looking at the gators, all the fish, everything. And we freak out over stuff like this. We don't get to see sea lions. I think they're really cool animals, but you guys are annoyed by them, aren't you? So they really do put a dent in the salmon species. They belong here, of course, but their numbers have grown so large over the years from unmanaged unmanaged practice with the, with the predators of the, of the resource. And they've gotten a little out of hand. They try, they migrate up and down the coast chasing the salmon runs and, and really put a dent in them and cause some issues sometimes. And it is exciting when they chase your fish. I'm not gonna lie. It's actually really, really scary. And like they come right to the boat and grab it and start thrashing it around. And it's a cool scene, but then you start losing some really nice fish over it. And it's a bummer. They look like flying penguins. The, we call them uh, the penguins to Depot Bay. They're pretty clumsy. Those are common mers right there. I'm watching school of fish. Sorry. Um, they can dive up to 600 feet down. They've been seen on oil rig cameras and stuff like that, cruising by, chasing bait fish. So they're a pretty, pretty cool bird. The entire trip we've been in Oregon, I've basically been saying like Oregon, Washington is pretty much like a little mini Alaska without the glaciers. It's yeah. very similar, like the jagged, rugged coast, beautiful, luscious green trees and forests and. Um, you know, the ocean's also kind of got that like similar vibe. I think the ocean really turns different once you get from like Northern California into like the Pacific Northwest and then all throughout Alaska, it's kind of similar. Fish number one, Chalupa. <laughs> Decided to do these fish honor and name each one of them for the, the portion of dinner that they are gonna be. We're having tacos, baby. The best fish tacos in the world. Excellent. Oh, a little Ling Ling, Ling Ling. <laughs> we, there it is. Look at how gnarly those things are. Big old teeth in there. Don't stick your fingers in there. Wowzer. That's a perfect eating size right there. Sweet. Good 23 bad. and 3 quarters. Nice. Good right there. <laughs> there you go. Nice Jeez. job. So Jacob caught these herring the other day. We got a little stinger rig. Got a treble hook, single hook, and then you're just your basic bottom rig with a little lead. We're going down. So we're just drifting. Jacob's got a bunch of rocks marked on his GPS, and he's grown up here, so he probably knows every single one. He was actually telling us that as a kid, he would fish the coastline and fish all these rocks, catch his rockfish or lingcod, go home, cook it up, and then rinse and repeat. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that's a heavy one, brother. Got it. Yes. Yes. Fish on. Fish on. Nice job, buddy. Solid stuff. On the herring. Got a boy. That looks like a good fish, dude. Alrighty. Oh, oh, there's nice the wing! Nice. Oh, nice, dude! Hell yeah! Yes! <laughs> that a boy. Let's go, dude. Nice Little. An Oregon, a Depot Bay dragon right there. Such a sick looking fish. The thing I love about these guys is their, their head and their mouth. They just look like the ultimate predator. You know, some fish have really small mouths relative to their body, but these guys have huge mouths. They could probably eat something, you know, a quarter of their body weight. Just gnarly looking fish. And this is not the blue, blue that you're gonna see. Hopefully we catch today, but Jacob says it might have a little bit of a green tint to it. All right guys, we're on again. I was dropping down my herring back to the bottom and 
I think a link pod just totally smoked it. Doesn't feel as big as the other one. It's uh, not, no, but it's, not. it's still a ling. A ling ling. No, watch out, little. These guys are aggressive. That herring's almost as big as he was. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They got such a big mouth. They can. I when we caught them in Alaska, their bellies were huge and full. I'm telling you, I think these things are voracious. Yeah, dude. Oh, you yes. oh, yeah. Oh. I told you he swiped at it. So do you think they're trying to kill the bait? Yeah. So they're just going and hitting it and doing whatever? That one might have been... He's too small, but yeah. you can actually snag him, you can spear him, you can net him, do whatever you want in Oregon to oh, keep him. If this was a keeper, we could have kept him. Yeah. He's too small, so... Bye -bye. Back he goes. So we just moved in a little bit closer to the coast. We're going to cast along this shoreline, and uh, I'm switching. This is a little soft plastic. It's got a little paddle tail on it, but I'm just going to bounce it right off the bottom. That's what Jordan's been having a lot of success with. Oh, there's one. Yeah, there's baby. One. There's Here one. Yeah, boy. Yeah. <laughs> on the swim bait. And you guys know how much I freak out over a jig bite. Yep. Nice oh, rock nice. Rock Nice I've never caught one of those before, I don't think. Is that a black rock? Yep, yeah, this is a black rock. That is such a beautiful one, dude. He's got some really, really pretty patterns on him. We've had black rock fish in a while. We have, but I don't remember them being that light, were they? They were really dark. Yep, it just depends on where they're at. But yeah, that's a typical Oregon Coast black rock fish. That's the most common rock fish on the coast. So Jordan's got one on behind us, but this is basically the Pacific Ocean's version of a snapper or grouper. Um, we have, you know, you guys see we have mutton snapper, yelltail snapper. They have things called rockfish, which are these guys right here. We've made a couple videos last year in Alaska and California. There's a lot of different species of these guys, and these are one of the slowest growing fish in the ocean. There's a lot of different patterns on them, and they get really big. You know, they'll get upwards of 30 pounds. Uh, we caught some crazy licking orange ones in Alaska, but this guy is absolutely beautiful as well. This is our fourth day in the Northwest. Beautiful, but man, these people, you guys are savages. This I just, is, I can't this tell is, half the time whether he's mad at me or if he's just uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's just he's uncomfortable. Because deep down, we've had a really fun trip so far. Now, it's been awesome having him, but I'm not going to joke. I'd rather be in Florida too. <laughs> you guys comment all the time, I'm from Michigan, I'm from Oregon, I'm from New York, and I mean, we are really blessed to live in Florida. I want to thank you guys for watching the videos because I know a lot of you guys, this is what keeps you going through the winter when you're fishing seasons. You know, a lot of you can't fish in the winter. These guys fish all winter long. They're crazy. They fish for steelhead and all sorts of other stuff. But yeah, this is this is some rugged stuff out here. As you guys see, the weather kind of turned sour on us and waves picked up a little bit. And you know what? Jacob said something good. We don't need to come home with a bunch of fish. We got enough for dinner. That's all that matters. I think we got enough for some fish tacos, right? I think so. And we're going to be able to quarter ourselves. We got like the proper amount to eat it all fresh. I hate putting fish in the freezer and especially fish of this quality. So this will be a really good night. So you guys can go ahead and check out Jordan's adventure on his channel. Stay fishy. We're all a very bit pulled inlet or wherever you call it. You guys called it an outlet, but this is such a cool little town. It's just this little coastal town called Depot Bay. And you got all these little cliffs right here. Just a very, very scenic place. I know Little's excited to go home. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say he said yes. We are going to have Jacob for these ling caught up. And look at this. These aren't even our knives. I actually completely forgot to bring my Dexters, but you know Jacob only uses the best. He's got himself a 7-inch Dexter right there. And you actually grew up flaying a lot of fish, didn't yeah. you? Did that for a job. A lot of us around here grew up doing flaying fish, cooking crab and stuff like that for the charters out of here. So I had a few years flaying fish, a little experience. Oh, 
when we were in Alaska, the guys described them as hot dogs, and it's honestly a perfectly <laughs> fitting word. Very we nice. call them uh, the small ones sausage cod. Sausage cod. Yeah, those little guys. Skin off. <coughs> Quick work. So we didn't get the uh, the blue green link cod. But you say that it's what, like one out of every twenty? Yeah, say? somewhere in that area. It's a hereditary thing called a. It's a bile pigment called Billy Verdon that causes them to be that color, and a lot of people want to say it's diet and stuff like that. But what we found it to be is when they're that color, they're that color from when they emerge and pop out of the egg to when they die. So it can't be diet. But um, yeah, it's pretty neat. Big thank you once again to Jacob. I know we didn't have much fishing footage in this video, but that wasn't because of him. It was just not the nicest weather, and he asked us if we wanted to go in, so we all decided to go in, because after three days of freezing our fingertips off, <laughs> it was about time. And we got plenty of fish to take home to Florida, so if you guys want to check them out, if you're ever in this area, book a charter, Depot Bay, Oregon. I'll have Jacob's stuff linked below. Yeah, thanks, guys. It's fun having you out here. Today is a special day because we got our butcher box delivered earlier. Big thank you to Butcher Box for sponsoring today's video. You guys know Brooke and I take our food very seriously. Lots of family dinners. It's one of the great joys of life. And with Butcher Box, we get the highest quality meats delivered right to our door. I'm talking about 100% grass-fed beef, free-range organic chicken, pork-raised cage-free, and best of all, wild-caught seafood. You guys still might be wondering, what is Butcher Box? Well, here's how it works. You choose your box and your delivery frequency. You can choose a custom or curated box, and the size of the box is based on your family's needs. ButcherBox ships your order frozen at peak freshness right to your door, and that's it. It's that simple. And right now until May 15th, new members will receive one pound of raw wild-caught gulf shrimp in every box for an entire year when you sign up today, and that's exactly what we're cooking tonight. This promotion is not gonna last forever, so you gotta act quick. Click the link in the description box below to get free shrimp for a year. We've worked with ButcherBox multiple times now, and I can vouch they have great quality meats, and we really enjoy the service. I am super excited to cook up these shrimp for you guys tonight, show you exactly how delicious they are. We're gonna pair them with our ling cod. As you guys see, I got a plethora of stuff here. I told Brooke it's gonna be a simple dinner, but I brought out basically the entire pantry to make some sauces, but we're cooking with butcher box shrimp and some ling cod. Let's go. So before we prep the shrimp, we're gonna do a, we're gonna do a miso mayo broiled ling cod. In here, I got some miso, some grated ginger. One thing I want you guys to know about these catch and cooks is I don't try to make them complex. I try to explain everything with as much detail as possible and to try to get people to realize that cooking is a lot easier than it is. I know you guys have seen over the years, I've really thrown myself in the kitchen and it's just learning little bits of information over the long period of time, just like with any craft, and you just learn upon it and you get better and you can make great meals for your friends, for your family, for your girlfriend, fiance, whatever it is, and you can share that passion with people. So I'm gonna explain the sauce to you and why I'm doing what I'm doing. In here is the grated ginger. Grated ginger, is very fresh, it's got an aromatic taste. Um, miso has got that umami flavor, it's a real rich, savory, super strong taste. These two kind of balance each other out. Mayo is gonna be the fat of our choice. Anytime you cook any protein, whether it's fish, chicken, shrimp, you gotta have some kind of fat, it prevents sticking, it adds flavor. This is a really lean protein. So we're gonna go in. This is a little homemade spicy mayo. If you don't wanna make it homemade, they sell spicy mayo at the store. But basically all it is is uh, sriracha, lime juice, sesame oil, and mayo. Okay, we're gonna do about that much. I just want enough to coat the top of my fish. So we got a fat in there, we got an aromatic, we got something savory, something acidic is gonna kind of balance all that out. So you're thinking lime juice, 
any type of vinegar, any type of citric acid, just a little bit of lime juice in there, okay? No, oh, rice vinegar. Sorry, this is rice vinegar. I got caught up. Paula Dean wasn't lying when she said a pinch of sugar for everything. Sweetness really brings out other flavors as well. So we're gonna mix this together. Rather than trying to recreate a recipe, I would love for people to know why a recipe is the way it is. And I think that's how you really grow and learn in the kitchen. That's what I try to emulate anytime I look at someone else's recipe is why the things are going in there. Just like with fishing. Why am I tying this knot? Why am I doing this rig, right? Okay, so this is done. I'm gonna take a little silicone brush and put this right on top of our ling cob. We're gonna sprinkle a little gochugaru on there. Think of this as chili paprika. This version is not very spicy either. Adds a really nice color and a really nice kind of smoky, earthy flavor. And now to finish it off, just a little pepper. So you're gonna get flavors from both sides. When you take your fork, you're gonna be able to taste it all the way through. So this is something you really gotta watch. When you broil fish, that's a real high heat. You gotta keep an eye on it. So earlier today I said, Brookie, if you could pick one thing to eat tonight, what would you want? And she said she wanted these like Korean style wings that we get at this restaurant called Yard House. So I'm gonna try to emulate that sauce on our beautiful butcher box wild caught shrimp. You guys check out that link, linked below if you wanna get free shrimp for a year. They look absolutely beautiful. So in this bowl, we're starting out with some minced garlic and peanut. Both very strong, bold flavors, right? This stuff right here, Brooke's already addicted. All that top is missing because she's been eating it behind the scenes. This is really good stuff. Um, Taku and Jocelyn actually introduced us to this from Outdoor Chef Life. Tablespoon and a half of this stuff right here. Some more gochugaru, about a tablespoon. We want some sweetness, but we also want some volume to our sauce. So I'm gonna go in with some honey. We got nothing salty in there yet, really. So we're gonna go in with about a tablespoon of soy. Now this stuff right here, this is gochujang. This is very spicy. Me and Brooke are not big, big spicy people. We like a little bit of spice. So we're gonna go in with about this much. And you might call us babies, but this stuff is spicy. Especially me. Especially, Especially Brookster. I'll do a little bit more. Here, you can read the label right there. It's like a hot pepper paste. Rice vinegar. We got nothing acidic in there yet, right? Acids always help to balance out flavors. So we're gonna go in with a little bit of rice vinegar. And since I want more volume to my sauce, traditionally the sauce is made with a lot more of the gochujang, but since we're not very spicy people, this is still gonna provide a real deep, rich flavor. I like to think of this as kind of like an Asian ketchup poison sauce. It's like barbecue sauce. Well, barbecue sauce is made with ketchup. Mm. Okay, now we mix. Okay, and we're also gonna do a little bit of sesame oil. Okay, so we're gonna take our delicious sauce that we made and we're gonna pour it all over these butcher box shrimp right here. Sauce right here. I think it's gonna be the best shrimp I've ever had. I sure hope so. All right, so now we're gonna go in with our shrimp. A little pan right here. All right, look at that. Oh yeah, baby. Broiled ling pod that was probably in the oven for, I wanna say six minutes. Let's just do a little test. Oh yeah, look at, look at this. Look at that flake. Oh my gosh. Now that, is cooked just right. That's not fake news, look at that. Man, that's good. Gochujang, little Korean style sauce shrimp. Two minutes, two, three minutes. Shrimp, very easy to overcook. Don't take long at all. We gotta toss our shrimp in some scallion. Put in some scallion right there. It's just another little layer of freshness and some more flavor. So a little bit earlier today, I made a ginger carrot puree. That's all there is to it. Oh my gosh, the jiggle on this ling cod is something else. Okay, ling cod number two. 
uh, it's cucumber, tomato, a little yellow pepper, and uh, some celery. Just tossed in a little sugar, vinegar, salt, pepper. You, know, you got a lot of rich flavors, you gotta cut all that out. We'll give it a, we'll do a 10 out of 10 on the flavor, not on the plating. Let me just finish with a little cilantro. I do not think cilantro tastes like soap. I think it's one of the best flavors on earth. I really feel bad for anyone who thinks that it tastes like soap, because you guys are missing out. Cheers to my babe. Cheers. If you guys happen to have watched my video from Oregon, we actually lost our GoPro from this day of fishing. And we were trying to recover it and we were asking a bunch of people and Jacob was trying to find it for us and I thought there was no way we were ever getting our GoPro back. We got the GoPro memory card back like what, a week or two later? Someone found it a week later after we got back home from Oregon, shipped it out to us and we got the footage back in just in time. You guys saw the weather on this trip from Oregon was so bad. A lot of times we can't bring out the good camera. We had to use the GoPro, but everything worked out in the end. The link pods that we got in Alaska, I don't remember being this flaky. It's very good. I don't really remember them being this flaky either. No, let's try some of these shrimp. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh yeah. I said these are gonna be the best shrimp I've ever had. Are they? <laughs> Spicy, sweet, flavorful. You get crunch from peanut. You get a little scallion in there. Wow, yeah. I think the shrimp also just are really good quality shrimp They are shrimp really too. good. And you didn't even have to peel those um, mm. shells off. <laughs> no. He asked me what I wanted today for like dinner and I told him those wings. It's not exactly like it, but it's really close. And honestly, this is way better. Good job. Wow. That's all a man can wish for. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Huge shout out to the Addicted crew. They were, those guys are awesome. You guys got to check out their channel linked below. They, I mean, they really showed us a good time. Addicted Fishing, Stay Fishy Adventures linked below. If you guys are ever in the Depot Bay, Oregon area, check out Jacob's guide service. He's a great guide. Butcher Box Shrimp, don't sleep on this deal. It's not going to be around forever, only until May 15th. After that, they always change up the deals. I don't know what it is, but free shrimp for a year, I think it's a pretty good one. So you guys check out that in the description box below. Two days from now, Bricky and I headed off to California to film some content out there for you guys. Super excited to share it with you. We'll catch you in the next one.